Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to meditate or how I meditate. Um, I've been meditating for, for decades really, for a long time. I first got into it when I was doing karate and at the start of the lesson we used to do meditation. I'm like, karate is heavily influenced by Zen Buddhism. And I did a bit of studying of Zen Buddhism, and um, so so I've done. There's like meditation. There's there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, and basically, I've just mashed together um, little bits from different different um, traditions of meditation and um, developed my own way of doing it. So meditation has quite a lot of um, is is used quite a lot in religion, especially Eastern religions, Zen Buddhism, Sikhism, lots of others, Jainism and stuff. All use meditation. Luciferianism uses meditation as well. Um, but I'm not going to focus on any religious stuff. This is totally secular. But uh, meditation's been studied quite a lot by science. Um, they found that if you meditate, then basically your brain starts working in a different way and you have different areas of the brain that are engaged that are not usually. Um, but meditation is used, so like I said, it's used a lot in religious stuff, but to whatever, of create nirvana or whatever. Um, but I like at a secular level, it's used mainly to relax you, to... The whole thing is about mindfulness. It's like basically constantly, or constantly while you're awake, your brain's going. It's you're thinking. There's ideas. It's like, your brain's just like it's constant activity in it. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're engaging your brain constantly. And this is just a way of shutting it all off. So you're just shutting your brain down. So your brain's not doing anything. And. Like I said, this has like dramatic effects on the way that your brain works. It kind of basically rewires the way that the brain works. I think it gives you much more mental clarity. It also makes you quite in touch with your own body and how you're feeling. So people can use meditation for pain and stuff. I remember once I've got a scar on my head there. I had a massive cut. I had to go into hospital and like have it sewn up. But I'd had some alcohol so they couldn't give me any pain relief. Basically, whatever was sticking a needle into me and sewing it up, but I just basically just went away in my own mind, used just used meditation, and I never felt any pain whatsoever. So it can it can kind of like help the the like the mind over matter. Do you know what I mean? Like you can you can use it to like lower pain and stuff like that, lower stress. Um. It's also kind of weird, it's meditation, it's a bit like yerba mate, the drink from South America, in that it kind of depends when you do it. So if you do meditation in the morning, when you're finished, you feel quite awake and, and alert and stuff. But if you do it late at night, it makes you quite relaxed and a lot of people use meditation in order to get a good night's sleep and stuff. So basically... That's that's what it's about. That's why we do it, um, right? So, so this is this is how you do it. So basically, you want to get your body to be completely and utterly relaxed, right? So you've got no tension whatsoever in any of your muscles, right? And then you then you're going to use your brain, right? So basically, you have to get yourself into a particular position. So I'm sat just basically cross-legged. There's the lotus position where you pull your legs up. And what have you, but you don't need to get into that position. It's all about relaxation, right? So, so cross-legged, and then you've got to get your back into its proper position. So, a lot of us have fairly bad posture. We hunch over. We keep us bent as backs bent most of the time. But naturally, our back is straight up. It has like a curve like this, does your spine, right? So basically, what you want to do is you want to get your body so that all of the bones. Of your spine are all just sat on top of one another so you're not using because if you bend it then you're using muscles and tendons to keep it but if you just put all, all of the bones on top of one another there then all the muscles down your back will relax so the way you do this is you think that you've got like 
a rope or a string at the top of your head here and somebody's pulling it up. So you sit down and you pull yourself up like this, but from the back of your head so that you're making a straight line down your back. So your back is, is almost straight. So if I do it side on, people sit like this. This is how you have your back, so that it's straight. So that all of, all of the bones are all sat on top of one another, right? So that's the first thing that you can do. So you get your back and get your posture right. Now, throughout the meditation while you're doing it, you slightly rock left and right like this. And that's to make sure that the bones are on top of one another like that. So you just slightly rock from side to side. Yeah, so you're up and you, and you rock from side to side. So then the next thing is the position of the hands. So there's two positions that you can usually do this. One, you place your hands on top of your knees there, which you might have seen. The other one is that you make a position like this and put it down so that that, that hole is over your belly button, right? Because one of the important things is breathing, your breath, right? So essentially, most people, when we breathe, we only breathe in the top half of our lungs. So when we breathe, our chest moves, right? But that's not how you're supposed to breathe. You're supposed to breathe from your belly button. So if you think of like when you suck air in, you suck it in through your belly button. So it's the bottom part of your lungs that are working, not the top half. And what that does is it pulls oxygen right down into the bottom of your lungs. So, so your body's becoming much more oxygenated. Um, and that's one of the effects that it has on you, is that you oxygenate your blood much more, which also turns your body kind of slightly acidic. Um, so, so that's another thing you've got to do. Keep your back straight, put your hands either here or here. I quite like this one because it focuses you onto your belly button and that's where you, you have to focus on breathing from there so the two things fit together. So I generally sit like this. But some, I don't know, sometimes I do this, it just depends really. So basically, you get yourself into this position, put your hands there, right, then, take a big breath, and let the breath out. Breathing in and out through your mouth. Right, so then, another thing that you want to do, is you want something about a foot and a half in front of you. It can be anything, you can put a penny down, I use a candle because I like the effect that the flame has on me. So basically, you want it lower than your eyes, so you're slightly looking down, which tilts your head slightly forward, which keeps your back straight, so you're slightly looking down at whatever it is that you've put in place. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to stare at that thing, right? You're basically wanting to try and shut everything out. So when you do this, right, like, when you first start doing meditation, you're not going to be very good at it. It's something you've got to practice and practice and practice until you can get it, right? And getting into that where you are meditating and your brain's completely shut down, that's quite a difficult thing to do. You have to practice it and practice it and practice it. So you get yourself into position, you put your hands wherever you want them to be, you take deep breaths, you relax your body, take a couple of more breaths, relax your body, then close your mouth and then you're going to breathe through your nose, right. You don't have to take big breaths, just nice and relaxed, but breathe from the bottom of your lungs and pull all that oxygen in. Look at your candle or whatever it is that you're going to do, slightly rock from side to side, right. Then basically you're in the position, so now what you've got to do is I use a mantra. So basically what that is, is it's a set of sounds that have no meaning, right? So you don't use words or anything. It's just um, um, yum, 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 yum. Like the one that most people know is om, om, right? So basically I use a variation of that. I got om, mani, ye, om, mani, ye, om, mani, ye. So what you do is Whilst you're sat in the position, and you've got your arms, and you're looking down here, and you're breathing properly through your nose and stuff, is in your mind, you start saying this mantra, right, yeah? Now, the thing is that the brain is going to wander, so you start saying this mantra, then you start thinking about random things, right? And this is, this is the thing that you do, is that as soon as you notice that 
you, you're starting to have other thoughts other than the mantra is you start to increase the volume in your head of the mantra, right? And if, you, if you're finding it difficult and you're having lots of thoughts, you start shouting it in your head, right? You start shouting this mantra over and over in your head and do it as loud as you can until it drowns out all the other thoughts, right? And then when you've drowned them out, you then lower the volume of the mantra, right? And when you get into a meditative state, the mantra will be so quiet that you won't even be aware of yourself saying it. But you are saying it, but just at a very low level. It's very quiet in your head. It's very quiet. You're just saying it very quietly. And when you're in that proper state, you won't even be aware of yourself saying it, even though that you are. But you use it as a way of expelling thoughts. So as other thoughts come in, you use the mantra, shouting it, to get rid of those thoughts. And that's the point. If you're trying to get to a point where you're not thinking, right? Where your brain is doing nothing other than focusing on this mantra. And then you get to a point where you don't even notice the mantra. So that's basically what you would do, right? So, as I say, this is a process. This is something that you have to learn how to do, right? It's not something that's going to... Like, the first time you do it, your brain's just going to be full of all kinds of thoughts and you're going to find it really difficult to get rid of them, right? But if you keep at it and you keep going, eventually you will be able to do it. I think it took me about two weeks of doing it before I ever really got into a meditative state with it and then as you do it it becomes much much easier and so like you can get into it within minutes do you know what I mean once you've done it and then it's about how long do you do this for so when you first start I suggest you just do this for five minutes right However long you want to do it for once you're able to do it and you'll be able to extend being in that state for it is entirely up to you. Um, people do it for hours, do you know what I mean? Some like Shorelang monks do it all day. That's basically all they do is just meditate all day long. So whatever, I basically do 20 minutes of it. Um, I think 20 minutes is a long enough time. It's not a massive amount of time that I'm having to give up each day just to sit down and be mind mindfulness. But... It has massive effects on you, so so it's not that hard. Get yourself into a position, straighten your back, tilt your head slowly down, stare at something, candle, penny, whatever. Put your hands into a position, breathe, deep breaths in and deep breaths out to relax your body and then start to breathe through your nose, deep into your lungs. Use this mantra, say this mantra over and over. Every time a thought comes into your head, increase the volume of the mantra in your head. And then once you've got rid of the thoughts, lower the volume until you can get yourself into that place. So, give it a try.